Let's look at creating a convolution neural network in Keras, but we're going to handle seasonality and trend outside of the neural network. Let's real quick take a look at the time series demand forecasting data set that we're going to use. This data set is hosted on Kaggle and I created it. It's essentially a simulation that looks at forecasting the demand of six restaurants in a beachfront setting. You've got time series data, natural language processing data, and computer vision data. Let's have a look at all three and this data set, I have a link to it in the description. This data set exhibits seasonality and trend both. So that's something that you have to be aware of as you're trying to forecast into the future. Seasonality is the fact that you're seeing this go up and down based on the month of the year. And if you zoom in further, you'll see that there's even seasonality by the week. Trend refers to that this whole thing is increasing gradually over time, especially if you look at the peaks. You have a bunch of different items that you are trying to forecast the sales for, and you've got historic data as it goes into the future. There you see a bit better, kind of by week, you can see this product was clearly discontinued there, uh, but you, you need to forecast when a product discontinues. What, what is that going to do to the rest? Is it going to cause other ones to fill in the gap, or will that demand simply go away? The files are here. The primary one that you're going to deal with is this one called sales train, which is your sales over time. You can see the dates here, the item, which are those items that we were just looking at, the price that it was sold for, and how many items it was sold for that day. These are all of the days, and the items are unique to each restaurant. You don't have multiple restaurants selling the same item. They're very similar across some of the restaurants. The actual items are here. You have some information about them. They're in tabular form. Each item is sold by a particular store or restaurant, store ID, and the restaurants are here. For natural language processing, I recommend doing something, maybe not with the restaurant names, because there's not that many of them, but the item names, you could certainly use natural language processing to maybe extract some further information. There's also computer vision, which are these pictures that were taken at the street where the five restaurants are at, showing the number of people there. So you could use something like Yellow or other deep learning packages, computer vision packages to count how many people. Both are on the beach and on the street because they, those tell you different things. Things. I did run a Kaggle competition with this data set and some of my students at WashU. You can see the root mean square errors that these teams were able to accomplish, and some of their code is in the code tab. I'll also put a link to the Kaggle competition that I ran, Kaggle Community Competition. So why do we need to deal with seasonality in trend? And what can we also do in addition to just putting the sales volume into there? Can we also put additional features in like the day of the week and the year to encode some of the seasonality into the neural network? There's a couple of terminology here that I'm gonna use. Level, this is, are the values being predicted with the trend, seasonality, and noise removed. So you get it to kind of a level value and we'll see what that looks like in a moment. Trend is an underlying, generally monotonically increasing or decreasing value in the series. So overall, maybe inflation, prices are going up sort of overall, or the population of an area is increasing or decreasing. Seasonality is one or more short-term cycles in the data, and the noise, noise is just noise. It's, it's stuff that happens that you just can't predict, or you don't have enough, enough data. Interpolation, trend, and seasonality. So we've got here the blue, the known values. That's your training data that you would be training the neural network on. You see it, you see it here. The red values are extrapolated values. This is extrapolating into, into the future as this trend is going. Neural networks do not extrapolate at all. So a neural network will only predict values in the output range that it was trained on. So it's these red values, as the, tr as the trend takes it higher and higher, you're just out of luck with the neural network. It's not going to figure that out, no matter how much of it you encode into the neural network. Interpolation, so these green values, if values are missing within 
the, the range of the training data for the neural network, it has a chance. And if you're encoding some of this overall trend into it so that it has days of the year or weeks of the year to look into, then it's got more of a shot. That's feature encoding to put that into there. So it's important to understand the difference between trend and seasonality. Seasonality are these, these bumps as this sinusoidal sort of wave is, is going further into the future. And they're not always sin, sinusoidal, meaning it's, it's like a sine wave. So for this data set, remember, neural networks can interpolate. Neural networks are great at time series. However, neural networks cannot extrapolate, do not handle seasonality, do not handle trends, at least not completely. And multi-layered seasonality is even more difficult. This is where things are bumping up and down by the month and maybe by the week, and who knows, maybe even by the hour of the day. The data for this data set, though, is by the day, so you're, you're okay. But if you were, say, predicting electricity demand, it's going to vary during the day. It's going to vary by the day a week. It's going to vary by the month. So there's a lot of layers of seasonality that you may need to deal with. So this neural network is going to look like this. We're going to have an input vector of 3 by 30 sequence. So the 3 are the day of the year, week of the year, attempting to give it some information that might help it unravel the seasonality a bit. And then a sequence of 30, just, just like before. Then we have a convolution layer that is going to, it's going to be a 2D convolution layer for time series. So it, it goes horizontally across, not horizontally and vertically like a image-oriented 3D convolution layer might do. Then we'll have a max, max pooling layer just to reduce the dimensionality, fairly common in convolution neural network design. We flatten it, and then we have an output of 1, which is predicting the sales volume for whatever, however far in the future we want to go. Could be the next day. In the case of this example, we're going to go 30 days into the future. A link to this data set is in the description. But for this one, we are going to look at the DS Beach Seasonal. This notebook is ready to go completely in Kaggle. The first thing that we do is we load the, the data, just like before. These are the three CSV files that we previously mentioned. I am going to plot just the raw sales volume. Absolutely can see trend and seasonality both here. Trend is the fact that this is just gradually increasing. Look at the, look at the peaks. And seasonality is just the up, down, up, down as the year, the months of the year go by. Demand is higher in summer, not so good in winter. The first thing we're going to do is detrend it. You can see these bumps that we have here. I'm just plotting them in, in Plotly. We want to take those bumps out, get it, get it nice and, and level. We're going to take the trend out. And we're going to figure out, too, what the slope and intercept of, of that trend is so that we can put it back into data after it comes back out of the neural network. Because we're flattening it, training the neural network on the more flattened level version. And the data coming back out of the neural network will have to be put back into what we expect the trend to be. And remember, trends are piecewise. Here we have one consistent trend throughout the whole thing, but the trend could could stop at a certain at a certain point. Like population and cities have certainly gone through trends where they, they go up, up, up for a while, kind of linear, and then might level off for a bit. So to de-season it, we're using statsmodels.tsa seasonal. This is a package that that is installed in Kaggle and Colab both by by default. It's pretty easy to use. We simply calculate an adjustment, and you can use the adjustment value coming back to, um, uh, to, to, get, to get the data in the detrended form. So you can see it here. Uh, it, it, it breaks it up, really, showing you the original data that you were dealing with, the trend that it detects. Now, in this case, I would say it is coming back more with the... Uh, the trend, the, the 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 trend detecting the seasonality, and then the the overall um, 
uh, seasonal as the, the second layer with the, with the weeks of the year. We can see the adjustment that it applies to, to each of these. The first few days, it, it can't adjust because though it, they're, they're the first values, there's no, it, it needs a bit of a, of a runtime of at least three dates before it can start to predict. So the result that comes back from this has the seasonality and the trend both removed. And you can see that here, it's been, it's been leveled. And this adjustment that you have that shows you, so now we create the data set based on this. We save the adjustment to a pickle because we're gonna need to run it through the same adjustment to get future predictions. And then we merge it based on, uh, so that we can get the, the store numbers for each of the items, because each of the items is sold in a different restaurant, and that's one of the inputs that we want to provide. We use our same series to supervised function. We're gonna pass in the data, the desired window size, which is gonna be 30, the lag, which is we're predicting 30 days into the future, and we do drop any NAN values uh, because the, those three dates at the beginning can't be, can't be predicted. So we build the data set based on that and we add in the day of the year and the, the week of the year. Those two give the neural network some information about the seasonality that, that it has, in addition to flattening it. We build the, the sequence data, which you, you can see here, the sequences going, um, going forward. We remove the cases that, that didn't fit evenly into the 30 days because not everything, I mean, we're, we're going to hit a point where we can't, we don't have enough data yet anymore to, uh, to put into that. And then we create the convolution neural network uh, that, that will have all, all of that data sent to it for, for training. And we can see that it trains. And at the end of it, this is, these are the training's curves. It reaches a point where it stops, and we see the, the RMSE, and it looks awesome. I'm 1.44 and 1.3. Very good root mean square errors, but don't get too excited yet. We haven't put the seasonality back into it, so we were predicting on the flattened, the, the completely flattened level version of it. We need to put the seasonality back in, and that's what we do here. And then we're back up to around uh, 8.3 for the root mean square error. And thank you for watching this video. And if you found this useful, please uh, give me a like and subscribe to the channel. This is part of a series on demand forecasting. There'll be other videos showing other elements of this, uh, this process in this data set.